Orleans. It was a deadly weekend as two hit and run crashes claim the life of two people. We have details on those crashes. And Mayor Cantrell is taking another trip overseas despite recent controversies. Find out where she's going now. Also, cooler weather is on the way. Meteorologist Brooke Laser will tell us how cool it's going to get and when those temps will get here. You're watching Good Morning New Orleans. Thanks for waking up with us on oh, Good Morning New Orleans. I'm Stephanie Chaynock. And I'm Peyton Trist. It was another tough Saints loss yesterday as we dropped to two and four this season. Orleans roast. Wake it up with quite a temperature spread on the map. Usually Bocalusa is our coolest location and right now you would think it were Buras, right? 71 there and we're in the 60s elsewhere. So we are going to see a lot of fog this morning. Make sure as you're waking up you maybe add a couple minutes to your drive time if you are crossing the Causeway or the twin spans. Temperatures in the upper 60s right now. That humidity is uh, pretty considerable. Look at the beach camera. Oh, wow, it's a little spooky but pretty neat looking nonetheless. So those visibility limitations are going to be with us through at least 9 a.m. and that's when the dense fog advisory is issued until we've also got some freeze watches out there. That's because of the anticipation on what's coming after this cold front. So we'll break that all down for you in just a moment. But first, let's check on traffic. It's 502 and traffic is brought to you by Chip Forstall. Right now, no closures due to the fog, but we'll continue to keep you posted. We also have a lot of atmospheric fog as well. So something to think about. Check on your flights at MSY. Shouldn't have too many delays, but there's the chance some flights may be affected. We continue towards New Orleans with mostly green on the map. So right now, no noticeable differences. Usually we're not seeing a whole lot of traffic as you're waking up at this particular hour, but you can see along the Mississippi Gulf Coast and in Slidell, green as well. So about a seven minute drive for the twin spans, 27 minutes for I-10 at Oak Harbor to US 11. And then as you pop over towards the Causeway, Mandeville, Covington, Madisonville, all looking great. 24 minutes for the 24 mile bridge as you're coming to the South Shore. We'll keep you posted if any accidents do occur. Again, maintain caution on the roads. And remember, you're always going to be best off with your low beams when you are encountering fog. Back to y'all. Sounds good. Thanks so much, Brooke. Well, new this morning, a shooting in New Orleans East sends one man to the hospital. The NOPD says it happened around 842 last night at the intersection of Chef Mentor Highway and America Street. The man was taken to the hospital by a private vehicle. And a little more than a mile away, a hit and run crash took the life of one woman. The NOPD says it happened at the intersection of Crowder Boulevard and Chef Mentor Highway just after 8 last night. Police say a man was driving west on Chef highway when he hit the woman who was trying to cross the street. The woman died at the scene. No further information is available at this time, but if you have any information, call Crime Stoppers. And Louisiana State Police are asking for your help finding the person responsible for hitting and killing a pedestrian and fleeing the scene in Assumption Parish. Now, state police say 54 year old David Gilbert was walking on Highway 998 Sunday morning when he was hit by a 2015 Lincoln Continental with damage to its passenger side. Gilbert died at the scene. And if anyone has information on this crash, you're urged to call state police. The man accused of killing local New Orleans musician Brian Murray is scheduled to appear in court today for mental competency hearing. Edmund Ramey is accused of shooting Murray to death back in January of this year. Police say Murray was babysitting Ramey's one year old son at the time. 
After the shooting, they say Ramey took the child and left the home, but he later turned himself in and returned his child unharmed. And today is the last day to apply for Louisiana's state police's upcoming cadet class scheduled to start in February. Anyone interested in joining the force should submit their application online at LSP.org. The requirements and qualifications can be found under the Become a Trooper tab on their website. And New Orleans Mayor Latoya Cantrell is preparing to travel overseas again this week. This time she's heading to Buenos Aires, Argentina for the C40 World Mayors Summit. The mayor is listed as a speaker for the event. The summit is a triennial climate action conference. It starts Wednesday and runs through Friday. This will mark the mayor's fourth foreign trip this year, including one to Switzerland, another to France and the latest to Amsterdam. Critics say that she shouldn't be spending the city's money on travel during the city's crime crisis. Covering St. Bernard Parish, new housing is available for people in Araby as the city continues to recover from a deadly tornado. It's part of the sold on St. Bernard program, which Councilman Gillis McClowski says would not be possible without the Sheriff's Department. Um, the general message is we're, we're, we're strong as we ever were and growing. So um, please come out and, and uh, see the homes that we have available and enjoy the area. And if you missed the parade of homes, you can still take a look at what homes are available. Just go to the website sold on stbernard.com. With COVID numbers staying low, more and more fun events are returning to the area. In New Orleans, the Crescent City Blues and Barbecue Festival was the latest event to come back, and there was plenty of music and delicious barbecue. WGNO's Jordan Lippincott has a recap. Put your hands together for Joy Clark. Sunday marked the last day of the Crescent City Blues and Barbecue Festival. It had been nearly three years since the last one because of the pandemic. Uh, definitely some ups and downs and putting it all together, but you know, we have a wonderful team here and uh, we are so motivated to bring musicians back to the stage to get gig workers back working, the food vendors and the craft vendors. The festival marked a milestone this year and veteran attendees were glad to be back. Yes, I think we've been to every one of these Crescent City Blues and Barbecues 15 years. Happening at Lafayette Square, the festival was made up of two stages and surrounding food, drink, and art vendors. The music is always the centerpiece, but you know, the food it makes it all wonderful as well. I just had some boudin and some grits, corn grits with gouda cheese in it. It's very good. But the music is the reason people stick around. On Friday, I played with John Cleary and the Absolute Master Gentleman. Today, I'm playing with Joy Clark. And it's a great honor to be with both of those acts. Jordan Lippincott, WGNO News. Our very own LBJ was out there this weekend as the MC. There was a great turnout for this weekend's events, and some of the proceeds go towards the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Foundation. The November midterm elections are now just more than three weeks away, with campaigns now heating up in battleground states, including Georgia, seen as a must win to lock in control of the Senate. I'm ABC's Justin Finch in Washington with more ahead. Good morning. That means daylight saving time is less than three weeks away, and we're starting to see a big change in temperatures. That means some fog out there this morning. Details coming up.
Stephanie Chainon, and meteorologist Brooke Laser. Listen up, time is running out for you to register to vote in the upcoming election next month. Tomorrow is the last day to register online at GoVote.com. Early voting begins next week and it runs until November 1st. For more information on the upcoming election, you can go to GoVote.com. And we are now just weeks away from the November election midterms. And one of the most closely watched contests is the race for Georgia Senator. A win for either party in the crucial battleground state will decide the balance of power in Washington. ABC's Justin Finch reports from Washington. A stark sight at Sunday's Georgia senatorial debate. Republican nominee Herschel Walker opting out. Herschel Walker, a Republican, is a businessman and former professional athlete. Mr. Walker has declined to participate and is represented by an empty podium. Walker's campaign saying he never agreed to attend. His absence comes amid criticism. He was pretending to be law enforcement when he flashed a badge at a debate Friday. You have a prop. Yes. That is not allowed, sir. The former football star in a new interview insisting that honorary badge is real, given to him by the Johnson County, Georgia sheriff. Everyone can make fun, but this badge, give me the right. If I, let me finish. If anything happened in this county, I have the right to work with the police and get the things done. The National Sheriff's Association said an honorary badge, quote, is for the trophy case. Why make the decision well, to flash totally, it at the that debate? That is totally not true. But on Facebook, the Johnson County Sheriff's Office posting Walker was only made an honorary sheriff's deputy for his dedication to law enforcement and commitment to public safety. Republicans viewing Georgia as a must win to secure Senate control. But polls show a tight race between Walker and Democrat incumbent Raphael Warnock now distancing himself from the White House. I have voted to support the people of Georgia. And when I needed to, I've stood up to the Biden administration. A new model shows Republicans likely to take control of the House as economic concerns appear to slow Democrats' momentum. I think the first and most important issue is, are we going to uh, preserve and hopefully strengthen our democracy? That from former President Obama on this podcast. He's now set to campaign for Democrats in battleground states, including Georgia, Michigan, and Wisconsin in the coming weeks. With voting set to begin soon, new safety protocols are launching at poll sites nationwide, from hiring extra security to installing bulletproof glass and even holding active shooter drills. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. And the Justice Department says they will be closely watching Election Day as well. The agency reports it's investigated more than 1,000 messages to election workers since 2020, including more than 100 messages that could warrant prosecution. Good morning and a happy Monday. The time now is 5.15 and we are waking up to some dense fog outside. So something to keep in mind. Our dense fog advisory spans the entire coastline from the north shore to the south shore and all the way off towards the Mississippi Gulf Coast as well. We see this remain in effect until about 9 a.m. So something to think about as you are getting out the door this morning. Our visibility at the moment is a bit limited across the area. These visibility limitations right around a quarter of a mile in Bogalusa and Slidell. Same with Bell Chase. We continue to see not as much of a concern in New Orleans proper reserve and HOMA. So our bower takes you into the next few with temperatures in the 70s. We'll climb out of these low 70s into the mid 70s as the morning goes on. Our temperatures right now are in the 60s for the most part, other than Bogalusa, which is our one exception. So the dew point values are in the 60s as well. We nonetheless are watching that air mass change that's coming our way, bringing a big cold front that makes a huge impact. So this is why you're seeing fog as you're waking up. Our future cast showcases clouds with us all day today. A couple rain chances all the way off towards the north, but we're not going to see anything like we did yesterday trying to leave the Superdome. So as we approach midnight, most of those clouds are moving off the coast and then we got another round back. We'll get to tomorrow, but not a whole lot of rain associated with this front as it sweeps through. So our future cast by Wednesday Wednesday morning, nice and clear, and look at the temperatures to go with it in the 30s across a number of spots on the North Shore. 
We've actually got some freeze watches in effect, most of which are not for our viewing area. They're actually just clipping northern Tangipahoa and then headed up towards Mississippi and over to the west. But we are going to see temperatures right around 32 in a couple spots. So that's where we're thinking about at least the three P's, people, pets, and plants, not necessarily the fourth pipes. We'd need to be a little bit cooler for that concern. Nonetheless, we'll stay above freezing south of the lake, but temperatures are going to be much colder than we're used to in the 30s across Gramercy and Schriever, we see the 40s in New Orleans and Lafitte. So something to keep in mind. Look at Thursday morning. Same thing. That cold air mass sticks around a while and we'll be topping out in the 60s to 70s during the hottest part of your day. So something to look forward to. Our dew point values way down. We're not going to see any kind of humidity anytime soon. These values in the 20s and 30s. Remember the lower that number, the drier it feels. So it's going to be extremely dry out there and we may have some fire weather concerns because we haven't gotten a whole lot of rain across the entire area in a while. So humidity values on the way down as we approach this coming weekend. They rise just a bit, but they will not noticeably be much different. Afternoon highs today anywhere from 76 to about 79 on the North Shore. We'll see the 70s across South Shore locations as well, but some upper 80s sprinkled in on the map. So as you're waking up tomorrow again, 40s north of the lake, we'll see the 50s south and then the real surge of cold air comes in by Wednesday and Thursday morning. Let's check on traffic. It is 518 and traffic is brought to you by Chip Forstall. Again, the biggest issue is going to be fog as you're getting out the door this morning. So make sure that you are maintaining caution on the roads and using low beams. They're always the best option. Right now, 23 minutes for the 24 mile causeway. No closures at the moment and we're seeing plenty of green on the map south as well. We'll keep you posted if any accidents do occur, but make sure that you take it pretty slowly out there. Back to y'all.
Coming up this half hour, we have the latest details on federal student debt relief. Find out how you can apply. Also, authorities in California have arrested a suspect believed to be a serial killer. Details into who he is and what, what he was doing when police captured him coming up. Thanks for waking up with us on Good Morning New Orleans. I'm Stefana Chaynoff. And I'm Peyton Trist. Well, oh my goodness, the serial killer story just gets crazier and crazier. I'm definitely happy that that guy is behind bars. Yeah, absolutely. Which reminds me, I've been catching up on Netflix, the mm -hmm. uh, Jeffrey Dahmer. That has been a huge hit. Mini series, television show, I don't know what to call it. Based on true story, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Woo. Oh my Happy goodness. Monday. Yes. <laughs> Happy Monday. <laughs> Very interesting news today, right, Brooke? Yeah, somebody over the weekend I was saying, oh, such and such comes from a great family. And then somebody else's response was, so did Jeffrey Dahmer. I'm like, Oof. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Puts everything I, in perspective. Mm -hmm. I don't do serial killers. I don't mm -mm. do well watching scary movies. Me either. People I love have October. an obsession with this topic, though, right now. It's right. just booming on Netflix right now. I don't even understand, but right. I don't know. Some people love it. Some I think it's really just do. they are enamored with right. what's going through people's minds. They want to dissect happened. it. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Everybody wants to be the one who solves the crime because it's I just guess. something so different than most normal people would ever contemplate. Right. Yes. So, yeah. yep. Um, hard pass on that. We'll just focus on it feeling like October for the temperature as opposed to the scariness. Futurecast showcases you. We are going to fall into the 40s and 50s tomorrow morning and then we're going to see 30s on the map across a number of spots by Wednesday. So look at that deep blue. It's been a while since we saw this more than likely since February. Temperatures around freezing in many spots, so we do actually have freeze watches up for parts of the state. Not so much our viewing area. We're just barely making it in northern Tangibah, however that. But otherwise, the 30s are going to be a little bit less widespread south of the lake. So we'll be waking up in the 40s in New Orleans proper on Wednesday morning. That overall air mass sticking with us as we get into Thursday morning as well. So our highs are going to top out in the 60s, which is cooler than we are waking up right now. We've got a stalled balance boundary out there and that's the reason for the fog. So as you are getting out the door, make sure you're checking where you're headed and making sure that no bridges have closed. So far, we're not aware of any. Let's check on traffic. Speaking of, it's 532 and traffic is brought to you by Chip Forstall. We continue to watch mostly green on the map here this morning. So right now, no huge delays as you are waking up and heading out. We'll continue a little bit closer to Metairie itself, showcasing green on Causeway. Again, some of this fog may be affecting flights, so check your flights if you're headed out of MSY this morning. We continue with the Superdome looking good to go. Certainly looking better than it did yesterday as we were all trying to leave in the heavy downpour. Nonetheless, four minutes for the Crescent City connection as well. So as you're coming across the bridge from the West Bank, you shouldn't have too many problems. We'll keep you posted if any accidents do occur. Back to y'all. Thanks, Brooke. Covering America, there is good news for student loan borrowers this morning. The application uh, to have up to $20,000 of your student loans forgiven is now available. The application was made available on Friday. It is a short survey that asks for your contact information, date of birth, social security number, and income. Those who make less than $125,000 a year will have $10,000 forgiven, and those who previously received the Pell Grant will have up to $20,000. $20,000 canceled. The deadline to apply is December 31st of 2023. The medicine used to treat attention deficit disorder, Adderall, is in short supply according to the Food and Drug Administration. The FDA is blaming intermittent manufacturing delays for the shortage. And drug makers say that they are missing key ingredients. The FDA says supply issues are expected to last the next two to three months. And police in Northern California say they believe that they have a suspected serial killer in custody. Investigators say that he was hunting for another victim when he was captured. 43-year-old Wesley Brownlee was taken into custody in Stockton, California. Brownlee is believed to be connected to five shooting deaths in Stockton and one in Oakland. All of the victims were men from 21 to 54 years old, and Brownlee is due in court tomorrow for arraignment. 
Well, take a look at this drone footage out of Bogalusa, an overhead view of the scene following a shooting that killed a teenager outside a high school homecoming football game. The Friday night shooting is the latest incident in a recent surge in violent crime. WGNO's Brittany Dixon has the latest. We know with just a few minutes left in the game, three people started shooting at each other outside the stadium. The 15 year old victim was one of those shooters. We're told they were all from Covington, not Bogalusa, but people who live there still say they're fed up with the violence in their city. We had a knucklehead outside of the stadium ruin our fun. It was homecoming weekend for the Lumberjacks and Mayor Wendy Perret says they were celebrating a successful season so far. Everything was perfect yesterday. This whole week, the festivities that's led up to homecoming. In the fourth quarter, right after a touchdown, we thought there was a firework. But police say about 20 rounds were fired between three people, including the victim. The chaos captured on camera as fans and players ran for cover under the stands. It breaks my heart because it, it, it shows the disparity of people just not having the gospel in their life. Drake Westmoreland is a youth minister at Westside Emanuel Baptist Church, and he believes social media has led to the violence. The biggest thing is definitely probably social media and, and just a lot of music things that we listen to and stuff like that. Him and Tyron Truing with Better Bogalusa agree more needs to be done for teens in the city. We have to put more resources into our kids because right now there isn't much to do in Bogalusa. There's not a, a skating rink or even a bowling alley, so we have to give them more positive outlets. As for what's next, we have protocols and standards and of course winding that takes place going inside, but maybe nobody hanging outside of it. You know, we there's things that we can look at. Bogalusa City School Superintendent Lisa Tanner released a statement saying in part it is with complete disbelief and sadness that I write this letter. Thank you to our fans who have supported our Lumberjacks this season. I pray that your support will continue in the days to come. You can read the rest of her letter on our website, WGNO.com. We have a traffic alert for drivers in Gentilly this morning, starting at 7 this morning. The riverbound lanes in the 5200 block of Paris Avenue will be closed through the end of the month. Traffic will shift to one lane on the lakebound side of Paris Avenue, and the closure will allow crews to work on drainage in that area. And in Jefferson Parish, a bridge replacement project is shutting down an intersection in Metairie. Starting at 9 a.m., crews will begin work to replace the bridge at the intersection of Metairie Heights Avenue and West Napoleon. Southbound traffic will use Metairie Road as a detour, and northbound traffic will use the I-10 service road. The intersection will remain closed until next August. Coming up, find out when economists think a recession will hit the U.S. It might be sooner than we think. And good morning, New Orleans. You're waking up to yet another week of October. Not too far from falling back for daylight saving time. We've got details on a cooler pattern ahead coming up. Stay with us.
Stephanie Chainon, and meteorologist Brooke Laser. Welcome back. The time now is 541. Some economists now agree that the U.S. is more likely to hit a recession in the coming year. According to a survey from the Wall Street Journal, economists believe that a recession is 63% likely to happen. That's up from 49% in July. Well, nobody won Saturday night's Powerball drawing. Now the jackpot is up to $480 million. The cash out value is estimated at about $240 million. The next drawing is tonight at 10. Meanwhile, two lucky winners in Florida and California will be splitting a $494 million Mega Millions prize. Wow. Good morning and a happy Monday. Yet another week we are further into October and waking up once again with some fog out there. We've got a stationary front that's hanging out and causing these issues across the region. So temperatures at the moment are actually rising into the 70s across New Orleans. Look at the beach camera on our Mississippi Gulf Coast. You can't hardly see anything from the Beau Rivage. So make sure that you're adding a couple minutes to today's drive time on the North Shore, South Shore and Mississippi Gulf Coast. Our whole area is under this dense fog advisory until 9 a.m. Visibilities at the moment are below a quarter of a mile in Slidell and Bell Chase. We're seeing about a half mile visibility in Bogalusa and Reserve. So something to keep in mind as you are headed out the door. Hour by hour keeps us mostly cloudy this morning as we're waking up. So we're going to see a lot of clouds around, but the front's not coming through with a whole lot of rain chances. Temperatures climbing from these lower 70s to the mid then upper 70s across our area. So it's going to be a pretty comfortable day today temperature wise, but we've got some much colder air on the way over the next 24 to 48 hours. Your dew point values are in the 60s, so we're not feeling a ton of humidity, but it's more humid than we were right after last week's cold front. Here's the future cast. Couple of quick passing showers sprinkled around, but you're not going to see anything like we did leaving the Superdome yesterday. Quite an experience. Our future cast is going to be nice and quiet as we approach overnight, and then we'll have another round of clouds coming through tomorrow with the coldest air filtering in Wednesday morning. So you see those winds out of the north. Look at the future cast. Here we go. Waking up on Wednesday at 7 a.m. to freezing conditions in some of our viewing area locations. Slidell as well as Kentwood and Poplarville all below 32 degrees. Ponchatoula at 33. Gramercy and Trever in the 30s and the rest of our South Shore locations in the 40s. So that's a huge difference in comparison to what you've been waking up to over the last couple of weeks and months. Of course, our future cast on Thursday is a little bit warmer with everybody above freezing and then and of course, the South Shore warmer in the 40s, but we do have a freeze watch issued for northern Tangipahoa starting tomorrow night. So during the warmest part of your day, looking to the rest of this week, we're going to primarily top out in the 60s, meaning we're going to be cooler then than you are waking up right now. Our dew point values are going to stay super low in the 20s and 30s. Remember, the lower that number, the less muggy it feels, so the drier air is out there. We continue with this trend all the way through your weekend, so you're not noticing humidity into next weekend either. This afternoon is going to be beautiful. Nonetheless, temperatures are going to be in the 70s, so a gorgeous day today on the way and more sweater weather to come. I'm certainly looking forward to it, starting to feel like Halloween, which is just two weeks from today. Our temperatures will be in the 40s across the North Shore tomorrow, 50s on the South Shore. So even tomorrow you're waking up to some noticeable differences, but that coldest air arrives Wednesday into Thursday. Here's our sunset tracker. Again, our days are just getting shorter and shorter. Today the sun goes down about 627 in one week, 620. Then we lose seven more minutes by Halloween. And November 7th, it'll be at 509 because then we'll have fallen back. So we're not too far away from daylight saving time. And as we get later to the end of the month, we also get closer to the end of hurricane season 2022. Right now, no development to concern yourself with. Those sea surface temperatures on the way down as well. So we love to see it. Warmer than normal conditions, tough to believe, right? But you think about our averages during this time of year across the region, and we're going to be a little bit warmer than normal. Nonetheless, Definitely cool for us. So those rain chances stay nice and low. Temperatures from the 70s to 60s. No 80s on the map, which means we're certainly finished with our 90 degree days. Back to you, Seth. Thanks, Brooke. Well, have you borrowed money from your friends lately? Did you pay them back? That's next in Debt Chat.
Hey, did you know a study called the Friends Again Report found 53% of people ended a friendship after loaning a friend money and were never paid back? Ooh. And 80% of Americans feel that owing a friend money is a bad thing for their friendship, which brings us to today's chat. That chat. Mm -hmm. All right, so do we need to pay back a friend? What do you think? Okay, so I actually don't owe anyone. I don't think I do right now. This very <laughs> moment, I am the type of person that if I borrow, you you spot me, I give it right back. Like the very next day at the latest. Um, I do think that's kind of awkward if you owe a friend and you yeah. just kind of like don't give them their money. We all work hard for our money. Exactly. We all need to just pay back. Just yeah. Be done with it. Do you owe anyone right now, Peyton? I do not. <laughs> I am also like you. I like to pay it back right away. Yeah. Get mm -hmm. it over off over yeah. my head. Yeah. Brooke. I do not owe anyone anything. <laughs> We're going to get emails like, actually, you actually, do you owe me, me this from last amount. dinner. Yeah. I was mm -hmm. just having this conversation with a friend yesterday, though, and it really is so uncomfortable, but I feel like I have a hard time letting anybody pay for me, even if friends want to treat me to the point where we'll get into fights over who is paying the bill, not necessarily the opposite. But right. It's just a sign of somebody usually having ulterior motives that they're not paying you back, right? Shortly. You know, this what? is why I really appreciate things like Uber, how you can split it. Yes. Like yes. if you're riding with like five friends, you can actually split it right then through the app versus mm -hmm. like later 